everyone, myself Shivangi Desai, your instructor for the video series of data mining and business intelligence. Today's our topic is data mining for intrusion detection and prevention. So let's get started. The security of our computer systems and data is at continual risk. The extensive growth of the internet and the increasing availability of tools and tricks for intruding and attacking networks have promoted intrusion detection and prevention to become a critical component of network systems. An intrusion can be defined as any set of actions that threaten the integrity, confidentiality or availability of a network resource. Say for example, user accounts, file systems, system kernels and etc. at a great risk of security attack. Intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems both monitor network traffic and system executions for malicious activities. However, the intrusion detection system produces reports whereas the intrusion prevention system is placed in line and is able to actively prevent or block intrusions that are detected. The main functions of an intrusion prevention system are to identify malicious activity, log information, attempt to block or stop activity and report activity. The majority of intrusion detection and prevention system use either signature based detection or anomaly based detection. So let's discuss signature based detection. Signature based detection method of detection utilizes signatures which are attack patterns that are pre-configured and predetermined by domain experts. A signature based intrusion prevention system monitors the network traffic for matches to this signature. Once a match is found, the intrusion detection system will report the anomaly and an intrusion prevention system will take additional appropriate actions. Note that since the system are usually quite dynamic, the signature needs to be updated continuously whenever new software versions arrive or changes in network configuration or other situations occur. Another drawback is that such a detection mechanism can only identify cases that match the signatures. That is, it is unable to detect new or previously unknown intrusion tricks. Now let's discuss anomaly based detection. Anomaly based detection method builds models of normal network behavior which is also called profiles that are then used to detect new patterns that significantly deviate from the profiles. Such deviations may represent actual intrusions or simply be new behaviors that need to be added to the profiles. The main advantage of anomaly detection is that it may detect novel intrusions that have not yet been observed. Typically, a human analyst must sort through the deviations to ascertain which represent real intrusions. A limiting factor of anomaly detection is the high percentage of false positives. New patterns of intrusion can be added to the set of signatures to enhance signature based detection. Data mining methods can help an intrusion detection and prevention system to enhance its performance in various ways as follow. The first one is new data mining algorithm for intrusion detection. Data mining algorithms can be used for both signature based and anomaly based detection. In signature based detection training data are labeled as either normal or intrusion. A classifier can then be derived to detect known intrusions. Research in this area has included the application of classification algorithms, association rule mining and cost sensitive modeling. Anomaly based detection builds models of normal behavior and automatically detects significant deviations from it. Methods include the application of clustering, outlier analysis and classification algorithms and statistical approaches. The techniques used must be efficient and scalable and also needs to be capable of handling network data of high volume, dimensionality and heterogeneity. Next is association, correlation and discriminative pattern analysis 
helps to select and build discriminative classifiers. Association, correlation and discriminative pattern mining can be applied to find relationships between system attributes describing the network data. Such information can provide insight regarding the selection of useful attributes for intrusion detection. New attributes derived from aggregated data may also be helpful such as summary counts of traffic matching a particular pattern. Next is analysis of stream data. Due to the transient and dynamic nature of the intrusions and malicious attacks, it is crucial to perform intrusion detection in the data stream environment. Moreover, an event may be normal on its own, but considered malicious if viewed as part of a sequence of events. Thus, it is necessary to study what sequences of events are frequently encountered together and find sequential patterns and identify outliers. Other data mining methods for finding evolving clusters and building dynamic classification models in data streams are also necessary for real-time intrusion detection. Next is distributed data mining. Intrusions can be launched from several different locations and targeted to many different destinations. Distributed data mining methods may be used to analyze network data from several network locations to detect this distributed attack. Next is visualization and querying tools. Visualization tools should be available for viewing any unknown patterns detected. Such tools may include feature for viewing associations, discriminative patterns, clusters and outliers. Intrusion detection systems should also have a graphical user interface that allows security analysts to pose queries regarding the network data or intrusion detection results. In summary, computer systems are at continual risk of breaks in security. Data mining technology can be used to develop strong intrusion detection and prevention systems which may employ signature based or anomaly based detection. Now let's discuss data mining for balance scorecard. The balance scorecard which is also known as BSC is a framework for managing business performance. Balance scorecards provide concise, predictive and actionable information about how a company is performing and may perform in the future. BSC provides a framework for designing a set of measures for business activities as being the key drivers of the business or key performance indicators which is known as KPI. Now this KPI are collected from CRM, ERP, accounting, personal, inventory and so on. The balance scorecard is used as a strategic planning and a management technique. This is widely used in many organizations regardless of their scale to align the organization's performance to its vision and objectives. The scorecard is also used as a tool which improves the communication and feedback process between the employees and management and to monitor performance of the organizational objectives. As the name depicts, the balance scorecard concept was developed not only to evaluate the financial performance of a business organization but also to address customer concerns business process optimization and enhancement of learning tools and mechanisms. The balance scorecard is divided into four main areas and a successful organization is one that finds the right balance between these areas. Each area or we can say perspective represent a different aspect of the business organization in order to operate at optimal capacity. So here is the list of this four perspective. First one is financial perspective. This consists of cost or measurement involved in terms of rate of return on capital which is known as ROI employed and operating income of the organization. Next is customer perspective. This measures the level of customer satisfaction, customer retention and market share held by the organization. Next is business process perspective. This consists of measures such as cost and quality related to the business processes. And last is learning and growth perspective, which consists of measures 
such as employee satisfaction, employee retention and knowledge management. The four perspectives are interrelated. Therefore, they do not function independently. In real world situation, organizations need one or more perspectives combined together to achieve its business objectives. Say for example, customer perspective is needed to determine the financial perspective which in turn can be used to improve the learning and growth perspective. When it comes to defining and assessing the four perspectives, these given factors are used. First is objectives. This reflects the organization's objective such as profitability or market share. Next is measures. Based on the objectives, measures will be put in place to gauge the progress of achieving objectives. Next is targets. This could be department based or overall as a company. There will be specific targets that have been set to achieve the measures. And last is initiatives. This could be classified as action that are taken to meet the objectives. So in a conclusion, as the name denotes, Balance Scorecard creates a right balance between the components of organization's objective and vision. It is a mechanism that helps the management to track down the performance of the organization and can be used as a management strategy. It provides an extensive overview of a company's objectives rather than limiting itself only to financial values. This creates a strong brand name amongst its existing and potential customers and a reputation amongst the organization's workforce. So that's it in this lecture. Thank you.